Is our reality nothing more than a computer simulation? Some philosophers and tech moguls believe that we are living in the Matrix. Supposedly, there are ways to tell because there are little errors in our reality or glitches in the Matrix. This is three mind-bending glitches in the Matrix. Before today's video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest videos. If you want to see a case or topic covered by Paranormally Listed, then go to criminallylisted.com and fill out the questionnaire under the Suggested Case tab. Number 3. Eternal Return From episodes of Star Trek to TV shows like Russian Doll and movies like Groundhog Day, most fans of fiction are familiar with the plot device of a time loop. It's the idea that a character is stuck reliving past events in an endless, indeterminable cycle. But there's always a point in these stories where the character first realizes something is amiss. That initial twinge or gut feeling where they sense they've experienced something before. And it's that wait a minute pause where they try to figure out what's happening that just might be a so-called glitch in the matrix. French philosopher Emile Barak first coined the term déjà vu for these Groundhog Day sensations way back in 1876. But the idea of having already seen something before has been around for much, much longer than that. Noted Greek thinker Pythagoras identified the notion around 500 BC, calling it eternal return. Practitioners of a school of philosophy called Stoicism picked up his concept and ran with it. They incorporated it into their view of our natural world. Their main theory being that, throughout the universe, what comes and passes will eventually come again, much like the seasons. The rise of Christianity put an end to such heretical thought, however. Christians believe the idea of eternal return opposed their belief in the concept of free will. The mathematicians, they only care about the numbers, and it was one such numbers guy, Francis Henri Poincaré, who developed his recurrence theorem in 1890. Essentially, his notion states that particles found in nature will eventually reset themselves after a set amount of time. So when Bill Murray smashes that clock in Groundhog Day, he was proving the Poincaré recurrence theorem. But regardless, the philosophy, religion, physics, or math, or the comedy that comes from seeing a person try and fail at something over and over, at least one person has reported living in this perpetual state of been there, done that, and there was nothing funny about it. In 2015, psychologist Dr. Christine Wells from Sheffield Hallam University in North Central England wrote a case study of a 23-year-old man who suffered from chronic déjà vu. In this case, the term suffered is not used lightly. The anonymous student first approached doctors in 2007 after starting university. Around the time, while on holiday to a place he'd never visited before, the man began experiencing crippling bouts of déjà vu. These were prolonged, intense, and often terrifying periods, he said, where he felt stuck in a time loop, reliving the past moment by moment. While trying to watch TV or read, the man was frequently hit by intense feelings he had already seen or read something before. While watching a movie, he absolutely knew he'd seen it before, but yet he had no idea how it would end. Eventually, he was forced to stop consuming any kind of media at all. And this man's hellish cycle of familiarity continued for nearly a decade. Chronic déjà vu is rare, but documented in people who have temporal lobe epilepsy. But this man's neurological tests show no signs of brain abnormalities. And tests of his memory and cognition came back normal. Doctors soon theorize that whatever kickstarted the man's initial déjà vu also brought on anxiety which, in turn, caused more feelings of déjà vu, putting him in an anxiety loop. It was either that, 
or a bug in the software of his existence. Number two, false memory. If you're ever told something about your past by a friend or family member, but you think to yourself, that's not how I remember it, you might be experiencing a false memory, or perhaps they are. It's that feeling of where you are absolutely convinced that something happened one way when someone else swears it happened a different way. False memories are not all that unusual. You could have sworn you left your keys by the fridge. But when entire groups of people, sometimes millions of people, remember something differently than an entire other large group of people, that's when things get weird. Some examples of this phenomenon are small. In the movie, E.T., for example, many people remember the alien saying, E.T., phone home. But others swear the movie line goes, E.T., home, phone. And in the movie, Risky Business, many people picture Tom Cruise wearing Ray-Ban Wayfarer sunglasses while dancing around his living room in his underwear. But others swear he doesn't wear sunglasses in that scene. Still, other examples of collective false memories are much bigger than movie quotes and scenes. That's what paranormal researcher and consultant Fiona Broom discovered when she began encountering people who, like herself, could have sworn South African leader Nelson Mandela died in prison during the 1980s. In fact, he was released from prison in 1990 and didn't pass away until 2013. But that's just not the way a lot of people remember it. Broom coined the term the Mandela Effect to describe this phenomenon. And researchers began to try to figure out why this happens. Neurologists chalk it up to what's called confabulation. It's essentially lying, even though you don't believe you're lying. Or you're convinced that you're telling the truth based on the memory that you have. Other doctors have attributed that I could have sworn feeling on something called conflation. That's where a person inadvertently merges two real memories into a false one. In the case of Tom Cruise, while he didn't wear the sunglasses in the dancing scene, he did wear them on the film's poster and in different scenes during the movie. But there are those who believe that there's no right or wrong when it comes to the Mandela effect that both sides are correct in their memories, thanks to string theory. Broom and others believe that our universe sits adjacent to multiple universes thanks to the way tiny strings of particles vibrate in various dimensions. Every time someone makes a decision, this universe spins off another universe where that decision plays out. The multiverse theory, like time loops, is a common trope in science fiction but it also has a basis in science. Video game designer Riz Verk writes in his book, The Simulated Multiverse, that scientists at the Large Hadron Collider have been studying the existence of multiple dimensions for years. And in 2010, Warriors confirmed that people at the CERN Collider believe that, quote, parallel universes could also be hidden in these dimensions, unquote. Which begs the question, is it possible that in some other universe somewhere, Tom Cruise is dancing in sunglasses? Or is the Mandela Effect simply a result of shoddy programming in our living simulation? Number 1. Synchronicity One morning in 1992, Jason Pegler was walking down the street near his home in Folkestone, England. As he passed a corner telephone booth, he was surprised when the phone inside started ringing. Jason wasn't in the habit of answering phone booth calls, but, for whatever reason, he decided to pick it up that morning. Amazingly, Jason immediately recognized the voice on the other end of the line. Her name was Sue, and she had worked with Jason at the local automotive club. Sue asked Jason if he minded dropping by work to help fix the fax machine. Jason was flabbergasted. He looked around the street to see maybe if he was being pranked. 
He told Sue that she had called him at some random telephone booth. How on earth did she know he would be at that location at that exact time? Sue thought Jason was joking and explained she simply dialed his home phone number. Jason shrugged off the weirdness of it all and went on to explain how to fix the fax machine when Sue interrupted him. And it suddenly dawned on her, thanks to the papers on her desk, that she hadn't dialed Jason's home phone number, or rather, she accidentally dialed in his payroll account number instead. Not only was the account number the same length of digits as the phone number, but it connected Sue to the random phone booth that Jason just happened to be walking past and decided to answer at that very moment. Many would chalk up Jason's experience to an incredible coincidence. But some believe that his story, and others like it, are the result of something more. British parliamentarian Horace Walpole had an act for being able to find just what he needed, right when he needed it. He coined the term serendipity to describe those instances, little happy accidents that result in unexpected but beneficial results. In 1945, engineer Percy Spencer was developing a radar module for the war effort. When he walked past the invention, he noticed the radar's microwave emitter melted a chocolate bar in his pocket. And that's why nearly every home today has a microwave oven. A similar happy accident took place in 1928 when Dr. Alexander Fleming took a vacation while studying bacteria. Coming home, he realized he left the lid off a culture plate and it had gone moldy. But he was shocked to see the bacteria in the plate didn't grow around the resulting blue-green mold. That's why we now treat infections with penicillin. In the 1930s, Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung coined the term synchronicity to describe coincidences that result in a deeper philosophical meaning. He described one session during which his patient recounted a dream she had of a scarab beetle. At that very moment during the session, a beetle flew into the office window. Some crazy coincidences share aspects of both serendipity and synchronicity. Noted physicist Stephen Hawking was born on January 8, 1942, the 300th anniversary of Galileo's death. 67 years later, Hawking died on March 14, 2018, the 139th anniversary of Albert Einstein's birth. What causes serendipitous and synchronic events? Spiritually minded people may point to divine intervention. Scientifically minded people may point to mathematical probability. But Young and others like him believe that these coincidences have nothing to do with God or the odds. Instead, Jung believes that these coincidences are the result of our mosaic or cosmic kaleidoscope in which everything is connected. Perhaps not unlike the open world of a video game. So the next time you find yourself saying, speak of the devil or what are the odds, perhaps consider it's just some lazy computer coding in the matrix. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you found it interesting. If you did find it interesting, please make sure you subscribe. We'll have a new video about the paranormal every week. If you just discovered this channel, please make sure you check out our other channel, Criminally Listed. We have over 325 videos featuring bizarre but true crime stories. You can find it at youtube.com slash listed. We also have a podcast about cold cases that were eventually solved called Criminally Listed Presents Into the Killing. You can find it on Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, and anywhere you find great podcasts. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.